Today's question is from Massimo. Hi Phil, can you explain to me how to analyze semantic differential scales? Shall I imagine it's a Likert one? I can't find any in tutorial about this. It's five years since I posted my first data entry video in SPSS and it's amazing I still get questions from you guys about how to enter the data. If you look at the popular uploads, most of it on my channel are about entering data in SPSS. Less questions are actually about doing the statistics. For those of you who actually get beyond the hurdle of entering your data, notice that I have now organized my uh, organized my videos in SPSS by like sections now, these chapters, so you, depending on the stage you are at your neural analysis you can look under these headings for what you need. For methodology, also notice that I have a series of videos at the bottom about topics of regression for student projects. Okay, so just a plug there. Okay, semantic differential scales. How you handle this has been pretty much treated in my videos, but let's just kind of just talk about semantic differential scales. Very similar to Likert scales as you said, but the answers is like it's an adjective and it's on a bipolar scale, so you've got one, you've got them on extreme. So for happiness, you have unhappy versus happy at the other extreme. And the scale can be like, it's up to you, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 7, whatever. Here is 7, 1 to 7. As with Likert scales, you may, there's a case for like treating them as ordinal and interval. Though really they're ordinal. So let's just recap the kind of main methods open to you if you're a newbie and uh, you're doing this analysis. For ordinal, for measures, for summary stats, you're looking to report the median and uh, interquartile range for measures of location and, and dispersion. If you're looking to report the correlation, you'd be looking, you'd be reporting the Spearman's row. If you're looking to analyze the pairwise relationships and, and the strength in terms of uh, like odds ratio, you'd be looking at cross tabulation analysis or test of chi-square test of independence. If you're doing a more kind of complex analysis involving more random variables you would be running some kind of a regression. Now if your semantic scale is going to be treated as a dependent variable, you need ordinal regression and that's something more advanced courses so I cover it. Uh, that's like usual master's level. On the other hand, other, otherwise, yeah, you, you'd just be running a usual regression. Fact analysis is possible. Um, for testing, for ordinal, you're running non-parametric tests. Right, on the other side, if you're going to treat them as interval, then for summer stats you're looking to report the mean and the standard deviation for location and spread. Correlation you'd be doing the Spearman's row. Regression you're running the usual regression. Test you'd be running the parametric test like t-test, f-tests. Let's talk about entering it as if it were interval data. Now that's the easiest here because let's just bring up SPSS. Say I've got this variable I'll call HPY for happy. Okay, this is in variable view. Uh, I leave everything as it is pretty much. I could set the decimal place to zero because I'm, my entry value is going to be whole numbers from one to seven. Scale, I'm going to set, measures I'm going to set to scale for so it's not categorical. And then I just start entering my numbers. Okay, like first person along this row, entry for that first person. Uh, might have said that's 2 on happiness scale and 6 for the other and so on. So down this column you're going to have numbers running from 1 to 7. Right, after reading around a bit you might see that some software and some authors use some other numbers like what, 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. The idea being that well, no, when you calculate the average, the closer it is to zero, that means the more in between you are, the more negative you are towards minus three, the more unhappy you are, the more positive three, the more happy you are. Okay, yeah, you can do that instead of on the scale of one to seven. But uh, after thinking about it, and unless any of you have any other ideas, I think this one, one to seven, is a better one in terms of flexibility if you're going to do a regression, if you're doing other things other than just summary statistics. Things to think about here is, okay, reverse coding. So some of your questions you might run a reverse code, so you want to get them all pointing the same way when you're doing your data entry. And I have a video on that, how you do reverse coding. So it's there. 
Okay, next suppose that we're going to treat it as ordinal, so it's like categorical now. Then, if you think about to look at scales we had like on a scale of, you'd say something like very, very unhappy and ha unhappy. It's different scales, right? But because they're so refined here, there's seven, I'll just keep them as numbers because otherwise you're going to have to find a word for this one, which would be very, very, very unhappy, very, very unhappy, very unhappy, neither happy or unhappy, happy, very happy, very, very happy which is a bit long-winded. In which case, all I would change here in the Likert's, uh, if you, you've treated it as ordinal, sorry, is I would not complete this as I did for the Likert scale. But over here for the measurement, you can just remind yourself that it is ordinal by going to measurement and ordinal. Remember, this really only matters if you're going to use a chart builder. But other than that, it's, uh, it's comforting for some people to have to remind themselves that they've got something which is ordinal. Or, or or scale tells reminds them what scale level of measurement that the variable is. If you're going to treat it as um, categorical, you might find, depending on the number of respondents in each of these cells, seven cells, you might need to combine groups because you might find the, these are too fine, and some of these categories might have hardly anyone check, uh, ticking on them. Like seven here, you might have very few people t ticking on it. In which case you'd be thinking about combining groups and, and I have a video on how to combine groups as well. Okay so I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, so go and explore my videos on how to analyze semantic differential scales.